Welcome back to Herbomatic. Something awful just happened to me. This is my route truck where I make my living. Uh, I have a vending business and this is how I deliver all the snacks and sodas. So my buddy was driving this the other day and it cracked here and he smelled some coolant. So anyways, he continued to drive it for the rest of the day. And when he brought it back, he told me about it. So I ordered this tank off of Amazon. I filled up the system again and uh, I noticed that it was running rough at lights and it was chugging white smoke out the tailpipe. So I strongly suspect our head gasket is blown. So today we're gonna go over how to diagnose a blown head gasket. We'll go step by step so you could do it at home. And then we'll go over using this product. This is the Blue Devil Head Gasket Sealer. And we'll go step by step on how to use this and we'll see if it works for us. This is the 6.8 liter V10. And in this particular vehicle, it's absolutely awful to change the head gaskets. You actually have to remove the front end of the truck here and pull the engine out because there's not enough room to get the heads off with the engine installed. So with that in mind, we're gonna try this Blue Devil head gasket sealer. Now they make two versions of this. They make this, and this is about $50 a bottle, and they make one called Pour and Go. And the difference is, this one you have to flush the system uh, ahead of time and do a few more steps. And the other one you just pour it in and follow the instructions. It's a lot simpler. But this one gives you a better shot at a permanent fix, according to the company. And we're gonna need two bottles for our application because we have, uh, just over seven gallons, so we're gonna need two quarts according to the chart here. So we've got all our supplies laid out. We got our other bottle right there, and we got the wife here to help us. So Kylie's gonna help us get the hose and grab some tools and get the beers or the pizza or whatever. So make sure your wife helps you on your project. Uh, makes it a lot more fun. Okay, so let's talk about some of the things you should look for to see if you have a blown head gasket. So before we go spending money on any products, we want to make sure that this head gasket is in fact blown. Okay, our first symptom of a blown head gasket we're going to look for is disappearing coolant with no external leaks. So if you're constantly having to add coolant and you don't have any puddles on the ground and you can't find any leaks, then uh, there's a good chance your head gasket's blown. Next thing you want to do that's real easy is pull out your dipstick for your oil and see if it's milky. Mine is not. So that does not rule out a head gasket, but a lot of times when your head gasket blows, this will look like a milkshake on the end of the stick. So my oil is dirty and used, but it's not, uh, not mixed with water. So we're okay there. Not every blown head gasket results in water in the oil. So we'll keep looking. Okay, another thing that can happen is take a look in here with the engine cool. Don't take off any radiator caps with the engine hot. But if you take a look in here, you can see if there's any oil in your water. I'm not seeing that. We don't have any oil in our water, but that does not rule out a blown head gasket. Okay, next we're gonna start the vehicle. Simplest thing to do is start up the vehicle. So you notice how it hesitated to start? It might actually have a little water in one of the cylinders and it might be hydrolocking. With your vehicle cool, not hot, we're gonna pop this open. We're gonna look in the reservoir and see if there's anything, any water bubbling up. See if any combustion gases are leaking into the cooling system and bubbling up out of your radiator cap. Okay, I'm not seeing anything bubbling up. So we're okay there, but that still doesn't rule out a head gasket. Another thing you can do is you can order a device that tests for combustion gases coming out of your cooling system. I'll leave a link for that in the description. You can grab one off of Amazon. And what it does is it's got a blue liquid and you put it over the top here. And if you've got combustion gases in your system, it'll turn the liquid yellow and you'll know instantly you have a blown head gasket. So I'm not getting any bubbles here. So uh, we're gonna move on to the next way you can tell at home if you've got a blown head gasket. Okay, here's the last way you can tell at home. And this is the most telltale sign of a blown head gasket is white steam coming out of your exhaust. It uh, looks like white smoke, but it's actually steam. And what it is, is it's your engine is burning coolant. If you have a blown head gasket, coolant is escaping the water jackets and going into the combustion chamber and being burned. And this can also result in a real rough idle because the cylinder where the water's getting in is gonna have a hard time firing. Okay, we can see our check engine light is on. We can also see that the ABS light is on, but that's just a brake issue and brakes just slow you down. So we're not gonna worry about that. We're worried about this check engine light. Okay, we're gonna use a very inexpensive code scanner to figure out why our check engine light is on. I'll leave a link in the description. These things are awesome for quickly diagnosing problems on modern vehicles. Anything over like 1996, 
This will usually tell you what's going on with it. Okay, to use these scanners, it's real simple. All you're gonna do is look for the OBD2 port, which is gonna be the male version of this. And it's always on the driver's side of the dash. So mine's right here. Sometimes yours will be a little bit harder to get to, but uh, you'll find it. Okay, so next thing we gotta do is we're gonna put turn the ignition to the on position, but we're not going to start it. So all our dash lights are lit up and we're gonna go ahead and hit scan. We're gonna hit read codes. There we go. So our first code here is cylinder number seven misfire. That means that's the cylinder that the water's going in and fouling. So let's check the next one. Here's an issue, it's talking about a torque converter that's unrelated to our head gasket. And our next one is a cylinder number seven misfire again. And now we're seeing a niction coil uh, issue. Now that's probably related to water shorting out that spark plug. So we're not gonna worry about that until we get our head gasket solved. And then a repeat of the torque converter. These little devices are invaluable on modern cars for diagnosing problems. I'll leave a link in the description. You can pick one up and it can also erase codes. So after you fix the issue, you can erase the code and see if it pops back up. Between the white smoke, the coolant disappearing and the misfire, we know we've got a blown head gasket. So let's go forward. We're trying to fix it with this Blue Devil head gasket sealer. All right, guys, the first thing I do when something awful happens is I run down to Home Depot and I go shopping to make myself feel better. That's gonna help us with our current project on the Ford. So we'll go test her out. And I feel a lot better about the head gasket being blown already after going shopping. All right, let's take a look at the instructions on this stuff here. And it says, uh, first thing, the cooling system must be clean and free flowing before applying it. So we have to remove the thermostat and flush the system. All right, let's head underneath the vehicle and drain the cooling system. There's a couple ways to do it. Now, some vehicles have this drinking spout here and this one does. And these are handy on a hot summer day if you're stuck working underneath the car, need a quick drink, there you go. You just, you just twist this uh, open and you could drain your radiator through there. But they're not very good for draining sediment. So what I recommend doing is actually removing your lower radiator hose and letting the water out through there. That'll actually get a pretty fast flush going and dump out a bunch of crap that's built up under there. Okay, so we got a spring clamp here. Oh, we're getting squirted right away. And we'll remove our cap up here to speed up the process to vent it. On the Econ line, to get to anything, you need to remove this air cleaner. Try to keep your drink at least uh, 12 inches away from your deadly chemicals so you don't get any contamination. Okay, we'll use our new ratchet to make ourselves feel better about the situation. I love this thing already, guys. This is gonna save you tons of time if you do any of your own auto repair. Okay, with the air cleaner assembly removed, we can see our thermostat housing is right here. And then we'll just take some Chanel locks and remove our top hose. Here we got our top hose off. Okay, there's our thermostat housing removed. And there's our old thermostat, it's full of grime. So this is due for changing anyhow. Look at the grime and stuff on this old thermostat housing. Look at that. So here's what it looks like when you clean it up with the wire wheel. And that's what it looked like before. Okay, she's cleaned up as good as she's gonna get. All right, we'll put her housing back on without the thermostat. As per the instructions on the Blue Devil, we'll start our threads by hand so we don't cross thread anything. All right, while our bottom hose is disconnected, we can flush out the engine with the hose and we can flush out the radiator with the hose. So what we're going to do is just stick the hose in the thermostat housing and in the radiator. And this is going to help just rinse out any particulates and stuff that have gotten everywhere. That looks pretty clear, so we've got our block pretty well rinsed out. Let's rinse out our radiator. We'll just stick it in the top hose here. And once again, we'll wait until that runs clear coming out of the bottom of the radiator there. Okay, 
so we've removed the thermostat already. Now it says flush the cooling system using Blue Devil radiator flush. So we've got that. So let's follow the instructions on this. Okay, so let's take a look here. It says to drain the system, we did that and we rinsed it out with a hose. Then it says right here to uh, fill the system with water and then install the radiator cap and run the engine for 10 minutes with the heater on max. Okay, so we're just gonna do a plain water flush first, according to these instructions. So I'm gonna go under there and reconnect the lower hose. See if I can do it from up here so I don't have to lay in that water. Looks like not. Okay, we've got our bottom hose hooked back up. So now we'll just fill the block and the radiator through this opening and then we'll top it off using the cap. Okay, we'll just fill up the engine block with some water here using the uh, thermostat housing. And now we'll fill up the radiator. If you need to determine the capacity of your system, turn your hose on low and then count the number of gallons that go into the system. So I counted about eight gallons. So that's the capacity of my system. And you can also tell when your system's full because the water's going into the radiator and it's coming out the top of our thermostat housing over here. Okay, so we'll connect our top hose. Okay, we got our top hose on. Oh, shit. Okay, so we're gonna fill up our reservoir now. Let's top the system off. Okay, we got plenty of water in here. We're a little over full, but we're not planning to drive it like this, so we're gonna just close our cap. Okay, now our instructions say to start her up. And put the heater on full. All right, so we've got the heater on full heat, fan on maximum, and we're just gonna let her idle for 10 minutes according to the instructions. Here's a shot of the exhaust blowing steam. Hopefully when we're done with our Blue Devil head gasket treatment, this thing will be running clear again. Okay, she's been idling for 10 minutes. So now let's go ahead and shut her down. You can also use the key to do that. Never open this while it's hot. So we're gonna wait a few minutes for it to cool down and then we'll be right back. It's been a while for the vehicle to cool down. So let's go ahead and check to make sure she's okay. We're gonna open this slowly. If we hear any sound, we're gonna close it right back up. Don't hear anything, so we're okay. She's cooled down enough. And the nice thing about a blown head gasket is it doesn't hold pressure for very long anyways, because it pumps the water right into your cylinder. You know, it's perfect. So now our instructions say to repeat the drain procedure. So let's go ahead and pull our bottom radiator hose. Okay, I'm gonna touch the hose first and make sure it's not scolding hot before I go ahead and open this. You can also use your pet cock giggity at this point because um, you've already got most of the sediment out the first time you opened it up. Let's go ahead and push this off. Hopefully, ah. Okay, we can actually see, saw her draining out the bottom of the tank there. We'll give her a second to completely empty out. What's nice about a nice warm shower is, the wife says I don't take enough showers anyways, so this is good. All right, so let's look at step number four. It says, close the radiator back up. So we put our hose back on. Then it says to add our flush and then top it off with hose water. So let's go ahead and do that. Now remember, if you've got a radiator cap over here, put the, put the flush in there. But this is my radiator cap, and this has got a hose on the bottom that connects to our lower radiator hose. So this is the same thing as pouring it right into the radiator. So now we've got our flush in there, so let's top it off with the hose. All right, honey, go ahead and turn the hose on. All right. Okay, once again, we're counting the waters, and we're gonna stop at eight gallons, because that's the system capacity. And that's eight gallons, so perfect. And uh, we know we counted right, because it's lined up with our fill line. We've added our radiator cap according to the instructions. Now it says, it says for flushing your radiator, run your engine with heater on max for 10 minutes. So, okay, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna run her for about 15 minutes, try to get a little bit more money out of our flush here. There's our steamy pipe and you can even see moisture in the bottom of the pipe here. So we definitely gotta get this fixed. We'll definitely know if this Blue Devil works. While we're letting the flush run, I just wanted to mention this truck only has 115,000 miles. And these engines are typically good for 300, 400,000. So this engine's just a baby. Sad that it's got a blown head gasket already. All right, you guys, it's the next day. Went ahead and ran the flush for about 30 minutes and let it cool down overnight. 
So now let's take a look at the next step. It says to allow the engine to cool, drain it, and flush it out with water. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, All right today we went ahead and threw on the swim trunks since we're gonna be swimming. Okay, let's take off our top radiator hose here. The wife isn't here to help us today, so I've replaced her with this nozzle to turn the hose on and off. So this side will blow out the engine. And we'll also rinse this out. Finally, we'll turn the nozzle around and rinse out the radiator. I'll reconnect our bottom hose loosely to fill up the system with water to make sure we get every nook and cranny of that uh, flush out of there. All right, you can see as I fill, fill the uh, top hose here, it's going through the entire engine block. It's filled up with water now. Now it's coming out the top of our radiator here. We can see our reservoir getting, getting full. Our water level's about right there. Okay. So we're getting water out of everywhere. So we won't have any of that flush left in the system at all. Okay, now I'll jump. I'm gonna jump under there and get rid of that loose hose. Don't tell the wife I'm messing around with loose hose. Okay, we got our bottom hose hooked it back up. All right, so we finished all the steps on the flush. Let's go back to our head gasket sealant. Let's take a look here. We got the thermostat out of there. We flushed it. Now we need to fill it with water and leave enough room for the blue devil. Okay, before we fill the system, let's go ahead and reconnect our top radiator hose. All right, so you gotta use distilled water when you go to refill your radiator system, because if you use hose water long-term, it could eat into your aluminum and cause corrosion. And also don't mix brands, like this is uh, Fiesta and this is Arrowhead. If you mix brands, you'll be in a lot of trouble. My truck prefers the taste of Fiesta, so that's the one we're gonna use. Orderly. I don't know where that sound comes from, but uh, I think it gets trapped in a bottle during manufacture, so. We're using distilled, because I plan on leaving most of this water in the system. I'll just add uh, antifreeze to it. I'll drain half of it and add antifreeze later. Fiesta! That must be why they call it that. Did you hear that? When you pop it. Que pasa? This one, this one must have been on a different line than the last two. Okay, let's take a look at our instructions. Start the engine while cold, then turn the heater to max. Then we pour this in the radiator slowly. Take one minute to pour the entire bottle and then let the vehicle idle with the cap on for 50 minutes. We'll give it a little shake. I don't see where it says to, but I don't see where it says not to. We'll take our time pouring it. Instructions say to take an entire minute to pour it. All right, that's two bottles in there. She's a little over full, but she keeps using it anyway. So let's go ahead and just cap her off just like that. You can see here, it's still cycling the water through this top hose. So this, this uh, blue goo is getting into the system pretty easily. All right, so we'll let it run for 50 minutes. See if that engine shake goes away as well. Okay, it's been three minutes since we added both bottles and I still see uh, about the same amount of smoke or steam. All right, it's been about nine minutes since I closed the radiator cap. Now we're starting to really see some steam picking up out of the pipe there. Seems to be getting worse as the pressure builds up in the radiator system and is forcing water into that cylinder number seven on the driver's side. All right, our temperature is just barely off the sea, and uh, we're 13 minutes into our test, so I don't think we're gonna have any overheating issues. Okay, we got 10 minutes left of our run. All right, it's been just slightly over 50 minutes, and uh, temperature's fine, so we're not overheating. We're basically at the end of our test here. That's how much water is left. 
I've still got steam coming out of the pipe, but it's a lot less. I mean, it's significantly less. There's a coolant level at the end. It was about up here. So we've lost quite a bit. All right, let's double check our instructions, make sure we did everything we're supposed to. Okay, so all we have to do is let the engine cool before installing new thermostat, drain the fluid to refill with compatible antifreeze. Notice here it says you do not need to flush the system a second time after the process is complete. All right, you guys, I drove the truck around yesterday, the day after we did the treatment, and I did a few errands with it, nothing too crazy. Now, I did notice that the smoke in the tailpipe is gone, but I noticed a different problem that's new after the treatment. is we got milkshake we were talking about earlier. Let's see the milkshake. So the water is mixing, water is mixing in with the oil. And the other thing I noticed while driving it was the, it had a misfire still, and that's in cylinder number seven. And one of the codes, if you guys recall, one of the codes we were getting was a bad coil and a misfire on number seven. So I suspect the coil has been screwed up by water in the cylinder. All right, so we'll change the coil and plug on cylinder number seven to get rid of our misfire. We'll change the oil to freshen it up, get rid of that milkshake. And then after that, we'll go ahead and run the 50 minute cycle again for the Blue Devil. I haven't removed it from the system. I haven't changed anything. And I'm glad I did not because two bottles of that stuff runs a hundred bucks. All right, on these Fords, cylinders one through five are over there. And then six, seven, so the second cylinder back. Okay, we'll use our last 10 millimeter. All right, let's go ahead and remove our doghouse inside the van here. Ah, got me. My old route truck was an F-350 box truck, and I liked it. Whoever invented vans is pretty evil, because... All right, there's our coil. All right, let's see if we can find some clues of fouling, figure out why this plug isn't firing. I mean, it looks fine to me. Let's compare it to a new one. All right, I'm gonna switch them around. You try to tell me which one is the fouled one. Okay. Do you think it's the left one or the right one? All right, now can you tell which one's fouled? All right, it was the right one, this one here. So if you caught that, you have a sharp eye. Oh, I'm gonna stir it up a little bit. We don't wanna get this copper infused stuff anywhere near the, the sparky bit. All right, let's go ahead and just smooth that out in the threads there a little bit. Oh, that's beautiful. All right, let's go ahead and crank her over and see if any water comes out of that cylinder before we put a plug in there. Keep an eye out for me, guys. I couldn't see from in there. Let me see from over here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so there's water in there. Okay, well that was a good idea then. Right, let's put our plug in there. And we'll start it by hand. Because Ford only gave us a thread and a half of spark plug thread, so we don't want to go losing it. Actually, I think this is a 06. I think they added a, an extra quarter of a thread to help her stay in there. All right, let me torque her to spec. We'll go ahead and use German standards. Good and tight. It's a new coil. The guy sneezed in it when I went to buy it at the auto parts store, but uh, it's too gross for me to clean it out, so I'm just gonna leave that in there. Well, I sure think she's running on all 10 cylinders. So uh, let's shut her down, change her oil, and then we'll run our 50 minute mark with the uh, coolant. All right, something I like to do is go ahead and jot down the information about my engine 
right under the hood so I don't have to crawl under there twice. So we see that the oil plug 16 millimeter and there's the number for our filter. Five, one, three, seven, two. Okay. Let's grab my favorite oil filter wrench. It's just a big set of Chanel locks. These things are awesome for that. Ah, there's the milkshake. Ah, look at that. Yeah. Okay. Let's pre-fill our SuperTech filter with our SuperTech oil. We dip our finger in here and get the stinky finger and then oil the seal here. That looks good. God. See, this oil dripping all over my Husky wrench here is going to lubricate the wrench. And then uh, it's got some water in it, so now the wrench is water cooled. You don't want to overheat your ratchet paw and have it uh, burn up on you. So this is a good setup here. All right, we're good under here. And we'll pour in our SuperTech, SuperTech brand. It's the best. My dad uh, uses this SuperTech because it's real cheap. And he drives a Mitsubishi Mirage, even though he's worth quite a bit. And uh, he's gotten 240,000 miles out of that Mirage, changing his oil like every 15,000 miles with El Cheapo SuperTech. It's probably all, it, it may all be made in the same place and then packaged, you know, packaged in a different. You get like a silver one, you pay a lot, you get a silver package, pay a little bit, you get a blue one. All right, there goes five quarts. Okay, we just need one quart out of this job. We'll pour slow so we can count out a quart. Mm, that's a third of a quart. It goes half a quart. All right, engine's got fresh oil in it, fresh filter. Let's top off our coolant tank here. Okay, so now we'll run it for 50, five zero minutes. Got our heat turned on full blast here. So we got a little bit of steam there. I'm gonna go rev it up a little bit, try to clean that fouled plug so it doesn't foul. All right, let's erase the codes. I'm not seeing a whole lot of water coming out of there, steam, but let's give her some time to warm up. Yeah, so she's still missing from time to time. Let's go check our code scanner. Okay, so we're still getting misfire on cylinder number seven. Let's see if we can rev it up a little bit. Looks like it dripped a little bit of moisture under there. We'll rev it up a little bit. All right, you guys, I heard a little noise and then it began to run smoother. So I wonder if it uh, finally plugged up that cylinder number seven. So we're about 12, 13 minutes into our second run and the exhaust is dry as a bone. So what I strongly suspect is that that plug being fouled uh, prevented that sealer from working because that sealer is heat activated. It's activated by the combustion heat of the cylinder that the liquid's leaking into. Okay, so we got no more misfires. She's running silky smooth. Yeah, we're about 30 minutes into our test and the water level this time has not moved at all. The last time 
we did this, that 50 minute run, it ran from here down to under here. So it used, you know, a good amount of water. I mean, she's running silky smooth. Look at that engine, it's not rocking at all. You can't even feel it running. Well, I mean, you can feel it running. Our exhaust is running clear as ever. Looks pretty good. Looks a little bit lower. I'm hoping that's just the pressure, you know, pushing it down, everything's swelling up a little bit because the engine has warmed up. We don't have a thermostat, so the engine is, you know, hanging around about, you know, a fifth of the way up from the bottom, from cold. It's time to shut her down. Let's do one quick check on our codes. No misfires. Okay, well, she's running a lot better. There's no misfires. I don't see any water coming out of the tailpipe and it doesn't appear to be using any water. So we'll see how long that holds up. I'll check back with you. I'll let it run for a couple days and then uh, check back with you guys and let you know if this Blue Devil stuff worked. And uh, if it did, I'll leave a link in the description. You guys can pick some up and can bail you out of a tight spot. Right, it's the next morning after the second try with this Blue Devil stuff. If we take a look here at our water reservoir, we can see that it did come down from the fill line to just here. And that makes sense because it may not have sealed it immediately. Uh, it sounds like about eight or nine minutes into the run, I heard uh, the engine change sound and smoothed out. And that's when that mist stopped. So I think that's about when it plugged it. So it used about this much water up until then. All right, now let's check our oil and see if it's making any milkshake. The oil looks pretty clean. It's good that we're not making milkshake because that'll bring all the boys to the yard. So you want to always get rid of that right away or you'll, you know, you'll just be surrounded by, unless that's what you're after, then, then by all means. And also it's not good for your engine. And we got a tank full of milkshake here. Que pasa? Oh, see this one? It's already sounding different because it's been open for a while. Let's fire her up and see how she sounds. Before, when you would go to starter, she would hydro lock a little bit on cylinder number seven while you were cranking it. And now I'm not getting any of that. She's firing right up. Let's get rid of this real quick. I can hear the boys coming. <clears throat> My milkshake's bringing all the boys to the yard. All right, let's travel three months into the future and see if our treatment worked. All right, you guys, it's been three months since we did the Blue Devil treatment on this V10 with the blown head gaskets. I mean, this thing was so bad that it was hydrolocking on cylinder number seven. So much water was going in there that it would barely crank over. You guys can check that out earlier in the video. And I mean, there was so much heat involved in this that this computer was fried. That ended up being our torque converter air, that torque converter lockup circuit was because this computer got so hot it fried it. I had to replace the computer. That air is gone now. I mean, the, the engine was nearly seized and it's, you know, so let's talk about, did this work? So it did work. So it is using no water, no steam comes out of the tailpipe at all. Fire it up for you in a second. Here's our mileage now. When we did the repair, we had 115,598. So it's been 2,373 miles since the treatment. The engine is idling beautifully and we have no trouble codes. Let me fire her up. So we've got no lights whatsoever, no trouble codes. She idles beautifully. I mean, this truck is fine. The tailpipe is running perfectly clear, no more white steam. So that head gasket sealer and a new computer, and this truck was right as rain. No misses, no nothing. All right, let's check the oil. It's been 2,000 miles on this oil. No froth to it at all. I mean, it's dirty, but it's not contaminated. All right, you guys, we've gotten 2,400 extra miles out of this engine. I mean, a blown engine. I mean, real bad, but uh, so far so good, you know? And one suggestion I would have is leave the concentration in the system at full concentration. Now the instructions say to, after your 50 minute run to drain half of it and add uh, antifreeze, but I 
I say to deviate from that. Now you should follow the instructions. This is at your own risk. But uh, my recommendation would be to leave it in there as long as the weather permits. You know, don't let it freeze in your system. It'll crack everything. But uh, I'm gonna wait until it cools down and then I'm gonna change it. And here's why. As you accelerate onto the highway or you're going highway speeds, or you're under heavy load, you're gonna get higher combustion temperatures than you are at idle. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna allow this stuff to really harden up or thicken up its little seal around the cylinders where it was compromised. Or if your seal didn't quite take, you know, like our first one, our first run didn't seal all the way because of that fouled plug, then this gives it a second chance um, to work again. And uh, it's kind of, you know, cheap insurance. And even after you do drain it, uh, you still end up with a 50% concentration should you get a pinhole leak or whatever. I've had no ill effects from overheating or anything like that or clogging up the radiator or the heater core because the stuff is heat activated by combustion temperatures. So without those temperatures, uh, it uh, just flows through the system. There's a silica in the mixture that the combustion temperatures turn into a sort of glass around the cylinders. So without that, it just flows through your system like water. But I'll keep you guys updated. If it blows or it has any ill effects, I'll keep you guys updated on it. If you need this for your car, click on the link in the description. It's an affiliate link. It'll help out the channel a lot. It won't cost you anything extra, but it's a great way to help support us at no cost to you. So we can continue to make videos just like this for you. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one. She's gonna be getting the hose and grabbing some... She's gonna be getting the hose and grabbing supplies and helping us out. So make sure you get your wife to help you on your projects.